Conditional rendering is one of the most important concepts in React. It allows components to dynamically render different content based on specific conditions, making applications more interactive and user-friendly. The most basic way to conditionally render components in React is by using our old good friend if-else statement. For example, when you subscribe to Nova Designs, you'll notice that the subscribe button changes. It turns gray and displays the usual subscribe text. If you haven't subscribed yet, the button remains white with a subscribe label. This type of a dynamic button behavior makes the user interface more interactive and visually clear. To achieve this in our React project, we use the useState hook to track whether the user is subscribed or not. The state variable is subscribed is initially set to false, meaning the user hasn't subscribed yet. When the button is clicked, the toggle subscription function is triggered. Flipping is subscribed between true and false. Based on this state, an if-else statement dynamically determines what the button should display. If is subscribed is true, the button text changes to subscribed, and the background turns gray with white text to indicate a successful subscription. If is subscribed is false, the button displays subscribe with a white background and black text, signaling that the user can still subscribe. The onclick event is responsible for calling toggle subscription, ensuring that the button's text and color update instantly when clicked. Finally, the app component renders the subscribe button inside a div, making it visible on the page. This example demonstrates the power of conditional rendering in React, allowing us to create real-time UI updates that make interactions feel smooth and responsive. But still, this is too much code just to decide what text and color to display. Writing separate if-else statements for each condition can make our code look longer and harder to read. What if we can use the value of our is subscribe state and render the background color of gray if it's true and white when if it's false in just one line? Well, that's where ternary operator comes in. The ternary operator is a shorthand way to write an if-else statement in JavaScript. It allows us to evaluate a condition and return one of two values based on whether the condition is true or false. Instead of defining button text and button color separately using if-else, we can determine their values in line within the return statement. In the original code, we used an if-else statement like this. But with the ternary operator, we can remove these extra lines and define button text and button color directly inside the return statement. Now, the button's text and color are determined in just one line each, making the code much cleaner and easier to read. This approach is especially useful in React, where components need to be clean and easy to manage. Now, instead of cluttering our code with multiple if-else statements, we've made it short and efficient. We can see this pattern all over React apps. For example, when your use effect is still fetching data, you can conditionally render a loading state. Once the data has been successfully fetched, the component will update and display the final content. This ensures a smooth user experience by indicating that something is happening in the background instead of showing a blank screen. Right now, the dashboard component simply displays welcome to the dashboard immediately when the page loads. Even though we set up a set timeout, it doesn't do anything yet. The UI will instantly show welcome to the dashboard, no loading state yet. To simulate fetching data, we need a state variable to track whether the content is loading. We added is loading state, which starts as true. And then inside use effect, after three seconds, is loading becomes false. Right now, even though the state changes, the UI doesn't react to it yet. Let's now add a ternary operator to it. For example, if is loading is true, the text loading is displayed, indicating that the data is still being fetched. Once is loading becomes false, it updates to welcome to the dashboard, showing the final content. Using a ternary operator simplifies the logic, making the code cleaner and easier to read. Of course, you can also use components inside a ternary operator. For example, if you have a loading component and a dashboard banner component, you can place them inside the ternary operator to render them conditionally. Another way to conditionally render components is by using the logical AND operator. This is typically used for concise conditional rendering when you only want to display something if a condition is true. A good example of this is when we need to display a notification badge only if there are unread messages. For instance, in our notification component, we have a prop that holds an array of unread messages. Instead of using an if statement or a ternary operator, we can use the and operator to render a message count only when the array has items. If there are no unread messages, nothing is displayed. This approach helps keep our code clean and readable while avoiding unnecessary conditional checks. We often see this in real-world applications, such as sale banners, VIP tags for premium users, and more. Another way to conditionally render components is by using the logical or operator which works opposite to the logical AND operator. Instead of rendering something only if a condition is true, the OR operator is used to provide a fallback UI when a condition is false. A common example of this in web development is displaying a default image when a user hasn't uploaded a profile picture. If profile pic contains a valid image URL, it will be displayed. 
Otherwise, if it is an empty string, null, or undefined, it will fall back to a default placeholder image. This technique is widely used in user dashboards, social media apps, and e-commerce websites to ensure a consistent UI even when user data is incomplete. And I know we've discussed a lot of concepts today, which is why we've made a PDF version of this video. It's free, but we would really appreciate any support you give to the channel. Mastering these techniques will allow you to build responsive and interactive UIs while keeping your code clean and maintainable. We will continue discussing many interesting topics like this on our channel, so make sure to subscribe to stay tuned. Well, that's it for now, Novus. Thank you for watching. Thank you.